The Mendicity Institution was a charity located on Usher's Island, on the southern keys of the River Liffey, uh, between the Four Courts and the Guinness Brewery. After the building was abandoned effectively by its original owners, the Earls of Moira, in the early years of the 19th century, from the 1820s it became the home of the Mendicity Institution, a charitable organisation set up in 1818 to deal primarily with the problem of begging in Dublin, and it became its premises. Um, and it should be said, the building, I mean, while the building has changed, the Mendicity Institution is still there, doing what it always did, feeding the poor of Dublin. Uh, in 1916 alone, the Mendicity Institution fed over 22,000 people. And in 1907, James Connolly almost certainly uh, ate there himself, you know, and reported the experience um, in a column he wrote for a newspaper. The building was seized by members of the Irish Volunteers led by Sean Houston. Uh, a young man from the north inner city who had become a railway clerk, had worked in Limerick, became involved in the Fianna Aaron, and in 1916 was working for the Great Southern and Western Railway in Kingsbridge Station, now Houston Station. They have been ordered to seize the building uh, directly by James Connolly, and the purpose of seizing the building was that, well, it overlooks the, the Liffey, and more importantly, it overlooks the Northern Keys. What Houston and his colleagues were supposed to do was seize the building in order to interfere with the movement of troops coming down the Northern Keys. And this was intended to buy time for other members of the Irish Volunteers under Edward Daly, who were fortifying and occupying areas in the Church Street locality. The idea of seizing the Mendicity Institution was to tie down any troops that were coming from the Royal Barracks, now Collins Barracks, and basically buy time for Daly and his men in and around the Four Courts and Church Street. The original idea was to seize the building for maybe three hours maximum. When they marched down the Keys, most of those uh, involved didn't know where they were going. So when they arrived at the Mendicity Institution, often incorrectly called the Mendicity Institute, they were quite surprised to realise that they were going in to seize it. As happened in other localities, um, windows were smashed out, um, firing positions were created on the upper story of the building, looking across the Keys. And as well as that, in this particular locality, um, they were attacking it or occupying the building around lunchtime, precisely the time when the Mendicity Institution was feeding members of Dublin's poor, who were apparently unceremoniously driven out the back. Um, in later testimony, some of the Irish volunteers claimed that the building had been empty. Some said that they had actually driven out beggars out of the back, and perhaps those who denied it felt a certain sense of shame about what they had done. There is a literary association with the area, in that the Mendicity Institution is located right beside the building in which James Joyce's short story, The Dead, is actually set. One theme that runs through The Dead is the question of class, and more particularly, of one's social status declining. Now, given James Joyce's much vaunted attention to detail, it's extraordinary that there is no mention in the story of an institution that dealt with appalling poverty right on the doorstep of the house in which, he, in which he had set one of his most famous short stories. Fairly soon after the building had been seized and occupied, members of the Royal Dublin Fusiliers began to lead the Royal Barracks, now Collins Barracks, to make their way down towards Dublin Castle. And as they did so, Houston and his men fired on them from the Mendicity Institution. Now, in one of the kind of great ironies of the Easter Rising, uh, one of the first British military casualties um, was an officer called, you know, Gerald Nealon who was actually born in Rathmines, a former veteran of the Boer War. He was killed, you know, as this column was going down the river. And to add an additional irony, his brother Arthur was a member of the Irish Volunteers fighting in the Church Street locality, not too far from where his brother had been killed. The trams on the north side of the Keys stopped. Um, the troops began to kind of fire back. And fighting went on for a certain period. Now, as this died off later in the afternoon, because bear in mind, these troops were going elsewhere. You know, they were making their way to Dublin Castle, they had other things to do. Houston began to contemplate the prospect that the Rising had collapsed and began to consider evacuating the building and began to instruct his men to basically abandon their gear, their uniforms, their weapons and to start making their way home as best they could. On receiving word that the Rising hadn't collapsed, he decided to remain in the building. Now, he also decided to stay in the building far beyond the three hours that Connolly had initially instructed him to remain there for reasons that we simply don't understand or don't know. The Mendicity Institution didn't see a great deal of fighting in the days that followed. Connolly had ordered Houston to seize for a very, very specific reason and only for a short period of time. So I suppose you could say there was no point in remaining in the building beyond that. What seemed to happen in the course of the next few days, because given where the building was, it was in a perfect location to interfere not just with troops emerging from the Royal Barracks, but with troop reinforcements arriving in Kingsbridge Station, Houston's own place of employment. But what seemed to happen over the course of the next couple of days is that the British forces arriving in Dublin, and I should want to say British forces, you're talking about substantial numbers of Irish troops arriving from Irish garrisons, they bypassed the building. And the building wasn't actually um, seized until Wednesday morning. It seems to have been treated as something of an afterthought. When the building was seized, it seems to have been attacked by experienced troops. Um, 
Sean Hewson's brother went up to visit the building in the aftermath of his brother's execution and commented upon the fact that the building didn't seem that battle scarred. That machine gun fire had con seemed to concentrate upon windows, you know, so troops had shot accurately at uh, the members of the volunteers in the building. There were perhaps only 25 members of the volunteers in the building. Uh, maybe 15 who had gone down with Houston and perhaps another 10 who had come as reinforcements earlier on in the week. But the building was seized quite rapidly. Troops came up quite close to the exterior wall and threw in hand grenades and after a while Houston decided that the game was up and they decided to surrender.